Hello, today I am here with Daniel Brown Griffith, aka the Chattering Magpie, nurse, author, amateur folklore researcher, to talk about his current area of research, a symbol which for many represents the very core of Derby itself, the ram. Now it's fair to say we will have to have a little bit of a condensed version of, of what we'd like to say today because it's too easy just to go on and on. But as this is a work in pro progress, at some point in the near future, um, Daniel is intending to have uh, a talk at the Imperium in Nottingham for those who wish to know a little bit more. So at this point, I shall hand over to Daniel. Hello. Hello. The problem we face when we're trying to explain the phenomenon that is the Derby Ram, it's pretty much the same problem we have when we look at any form of folk tradition. We have a puzzle in which we're attempting the separation of myth from reality and legend from history. They're all interlinked. They're all equally important. The puzzle is compounded by the realisation that the traditions of the ram exist as two threads. The Derby Ram is the folk song, yet the Derby or the Toad Tup is the mummer's play. You can have the folk song without the play, but having the play without the folk song is inconceivable, which is obvious because the play is older. So to understand the Ram, rather than start at the beginning and work towards the present, it's better to, and easier to start at the present and work backwards. The most obvious place to start being Derby County. Yes. Most people today do associate the Derby Ram with Derby County Football Club, uh, club even, who are affectionately known as the Rams. The football club was founded in 1884 by a chap called William Morley, and it was originally an offshoot of the Derbyshire County Cricket Club. And here I do a very poor Michael Jackson impersonation. I can say, not a lot of people know that. That would be Michael Caine, even. Yeah, it would. But we've <laughs> screwed that one up. <laughs> well, we can always moon, moonwalk the, around the rooms of a Derby yeah. Ram tune, can't we? <laughs> I'm going to be saying that a lot, though, over this, because there's a lot of bits in this that most people don't know about. 1888, Derby County Football Club is one of the 12 founding members of the Football League. So the club has a very special, important place in history in British football. And like many other founding members, it's been up and down. Many believe that the association of the Ram with the town and now city of Derby stems from the football club. But this is not correct. It's the other way around, but with qualification. The adoption of the Ram in 1884 by the football club stems from the town's association with the army and the local regiment whose mascot was and still is a ram. Today, that local regiment is the Mercian Regiment, uh, which is an amalgamation of three older ones. They were the Cheshire Regiment, the Staffordshire Regiment, uh, and most importantly for us, the Worcestershire and Sherwood Foresters Regiment. The latter regiment was an amalgamation in 1970, before that, in 1881, Sherwood Foresters were created by the amalgamation of the 45th Regiment of Foot, the Nottinghamshire Regiment, which was founded in 1741, and the 95th Regiment of Foot, the Derbyshire Regiment, founded in 1823. It is the 95th Regiment of Foot, our Derbyshire Regiment, that's important to us. It has a very distinguished history served all the way across the British Empire, engagement South Africa and India. Early in its history, however, the regiment served as part of the British Expeditionary Force to the Crimea. And it was here in 1855 that a group of soldiers from the Derbyshire Regiment found a ram in the ruins of a Russian village. Taking the ram back to camp, he was adopted by the, reg uh, by the regiment as a mascot, given the name Private Derby Number no. 1, and the folk song, the Derby Ram, was adopted as the regimental march. You see, I think this is where a lot of modern stuff has stemmed from, this particular mm. bit of the adoption of this one ram in Russia. Mm. It makes sense in a modern way. Mm. 
that with the proud association of military um, the towns tend to have, that this one ram, this one Russian ram, mm. has just been in modern times. Well, historically, Derby had three regiments mm -hmm. associated with it. The Derby Militia, the Derby Yeomanry, and then the Derbyshire Regiment. They're all mm -hmm. founded in that order. So there's a, it was a very strong military history. Mm -hmm. The barracks demolished many, many years ago is now the site of, um, I think it's a KFC and McDonald's and a cinema. Mm -hmm. We had our own barracks. Foresters would that be? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is a strong military link. Yes. Very strong. So, there but... is a bit of confusion over that. Yeah. Because... Um, a lot of sources claim that the 1st Regiment of the Derbyshire Militia adopted the ram, but that doesn't make any sense because, mm -hmm. you see, a militia is a regiment of sorts in its own right, and it's not made up of regiments. Regiments are made up of battalions. So we need to make sure that we understand that mm -hmm. it was definitely the 95th Regiment of Foot, the Derbyshire Regiment, that began the tradition mm -hmm. in 1855. It's just a confusion of names. Yeah. And we know exactly where it originated from as well, because in 1867, a gentleman by the name of Llewellyn Jewett wrote an absolutely fantastic work called The Ballads and Songs of Derbyshire. But unfortunately, he made a mistake, and a lot of researchers after him quote him. So, going on to another piece of information which I think you've told me about over the years, which again, is fascinating, is this connection with the US. Yes, and this is another one where not a lot of people know that. Mm -hmm. oh. You see, what we're building on is common knowledge. It was common knowledge with the army, locals, because the ram song was a drinking song. Yeah. People would sit in pubs before television and sing songs, and people would join in with the chorus, which was sometimes very nonsensical. Yeah. Sensical. Um, but, you know, people knew it. Yeah. And soldiers in 1855 definitely knew it. But you can there's more evidence of common knowledge amongst the people because there are claims that General George Washington, no less, the first president of the United States, sang this song. It's said that he sang it during the War of Independence, the American Revolutionary War, and later as a president while entertaining friends' children on his knee. It was said to be his favourite song. And I will be honest, it amuses me no end to think that the President of the United States would have sat inside the White House and sang a local Derby folk song. Mm -hmm. Now, George Washington was the great-grandson of a chap called John Washington, and he came from Tring in Hertfordshire. And in, he was born in 1631. The family were gentry. They had a house called Sawgrave Manor, also in Hertfordshire, and they had business connections with lots of local families, including the Spencer family at Elthrop in Northamptonshire. That's uh, Princess Diana's family, uh -huh. the Earl Spencer. Now, John Washington was uh, Merchant Navy, trading across the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. But in 1657, he decided to settle permanently in Virginia. This was only a few years after the English Civil War. Maybe significant because it is documented that the Washington family were royalists, which is ironic considering yeah. that George later led the war. <laughs> Um, now, it's very probable that the folk song would have been known in Hertfordshire and it could have been transported to America by his family and others. But it's also possible that he learnt the song from his own soldiers mm -hmm. because many of them would have been from English descent. So the song, the Derby Ram, is very common in America. Fascinating. Right, at this point, it makes sense to have a quick read of the poem, which is the Derby Ram. Now, there are several ver different versions of this. Um, this particular version is from a book called Derbyshire Ballads, which is um, rather an old book. It's by Llewellyn Jewett. Llewellyn Jewett, indeed. So, I shall begin, and I'm the sure Rand will join in at some point. 
As I was going to Derby, sir, all on a market day, I met the finest ram, sir, that ever were fed on hay. This ram was fat behind, sir, this ram was fat before. This ram was ten yards high, sir, indeed he was no more. The wool upon his back, sir, reached up into the sky. The eagles made their nest, sir, for I heard the young ones cry. The wool upon his belly, sir, it was dragged upon the ground. It was sold in Derby Town, sir, for forty thousand pounds. The space between his horns, sir, was as far as a man could reach, and there they laid a pulpit for the parson there to preach. The teeth that were in his mouth, sir, they were like a regiment of men, and the tongue that hung between them, sir, could have dined them twice again. This ram jumped o'er a wall, sir, his tail caught on a briar. It reached from Derby Town, sir, all into Leicestershire. And of this tail so long, sir, twas ten miles and an ell. They made a goodly rope, sir, to toll the market bell. This ram had four legs to walk on, sir. This ram had four legs to stand, and every leg he had, sir, stood on an acre of land. The butcher that killed this ram, sir, was drowned in the blood, and the boy that held the pail, sir, was carried away in the flood. And all the maids in Derby, sir, came begging for his horns, to take them to the coopers, to make them milking gorms. The little boys of Derby, sir, they came to beg his eyes, to kick about the streets, sir, for they were football size. The tanner that tanned his hide, sir, would never be poor any more, for when he had tanned and wretched it, it covered all a sinfin moor. The jaws that were in his head, sir, they were so fine and thin, they were sold to a Methodist parson for a pulpit to preach in. Indeed, sir, tis true, sir, I never was taught to lie, and you had been to Derby, sir, you'd have seen it as well as I. <laughs> and there we go. Quite That's... an epic, this one, and there is several different versions and several different verses you will hear of this. If you put them all together, there'd probably be two dozen or more different verses. So, so much for the history, but what is this all sort of meaning? For a song to be of common knowledge at this sort of... Yes. So, the Derby Ram is historically well-known folk song. And it's obviously far more than it is today, because many people have never heard of it. Um, most people who are fans of Derby County... I've never heard of the song, they've never heard of the Mummers play. So the title, the words and the tune, they were known in 1884 to William Morley when he founded Derby County Football Club because he chose the Ram as the badge. The song was known in 1854, 1855, when soldiers of the 95th Regiment adopted it as a mascot. It was known in the 17th century when settlers spread it across the British Empire colonising the United, what was to become the United States of America, Australia and Canada. Mm -hmm. So much for the history, but like you say, what does it mean? For a song to be common knowledge at the time of the English Civil War in the 17th century, a century before the American Revolutionary War, uh, war then it must predate both wars by centuries. We can suggest this, we can surmise, but yes, what does it mean? And everything I've said prior to this point, this is important, can be supported by references and evidence. Nothing that comes after this point is so well supported. This is where it, the puzzle gets more and more complex. The evidence gets harder to find. It's very dark. Mm -hmm. In looking for context, we have to note that the Ram has very limited association with Derby Town. Until the late 20th century, it was not even featured on any official documentations uh, that were produced by the city council, although the crest is on the town coat of arms. Today, the council has this rather interesting emotion, you know, impressionist logo uh, with a ram and a buck with interlocking horns. That, I think, was only adopted in about the 1990s. Historically and officially, the heraldic symbol of Derby is the Buck in the Park, the famous mm. Buck in the Park. It used to be a pub. Said to be a male fallow deer sitting inside an enclosed field. Uh, often it's shown as a stag, the male red deer. 
and the two supporters on the coats of arms, they're also male deer. Although the ram is found carved onto portals and corbels around Derby, depictions of the buck in the park are far more common. Mm -hmm. um, there's a very fine example on the main entrance of uh, Derby Library mm -hmm. and uh, a very nice uh, oil-painted version in Derby Cathedral. So it's There's... almost like we have this confusion mm -hmm. that officially the symbol of Derby should is a deer. Is a deer, yeah. But somehow this ram mm -hmm. has come. Well, there, it's almost like there's a class, a class distinction mm -hmm. uh, between the two symbols. The gentry and the middle class associate the deer with Derby, mm -hmm. but the peasantry, the working class, they associate the ram. Mm. It's an interesting little class distinction that seems to mm -hmm. come into play there. Now, the buck in the park um, stands out locally as being very unusual because the most common heraldic beast across the Midlands is the stag, that's the red mm -hmm. deer. Um, it's found most famously on the Cavendish coat of arms, you know, the Dukes of Devonshire up at Chatsworth. It's found on many county boroughs, town boroughs across the Midlands, including Nottinghamshire. Mm -hmm. So the use of the fallow buck in Derby is quite at odds. It's unique. Yeah. Um, but it could just be local custom. It could be a misnomer. It could be a mistake in the painting. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be a red deer. Um, we're never really going to know that one. Mm. Uh, but the coat of arms supporters are red stags as well. Yeah. So it's always deer. 